Ah, you're here. Welcome to the Society of Scoundrels. You'll need some training to pull off a caper. And you'll need all your wits about you to become a better mastermind than your rival. So pay close attention. Ah, you're here. Welcome to the Society of Scoundrels. You're going to need some Yeah, yeah, we did this bit already. <laughs> what? Where is my helping hand? I swear I filed it away in here. Never mind. Let's get started. Caper Europe is a game for two players. You'll have six rounds to pull off heists across three locations in the European city of your choice. During these rounds, you'll play thief cards at locations or gear cards on your thieves. You'll score points by winning locations, collecting sets of cards, and acquiring stolen goods. Score the most points, and you'll win. Ignore her. She'll move on in a moment. <laughs> Let's go over setup. First, sit across the table from your rival mastermind. Place the game board between you, with the long side facing each player. The tin coins go next to one end of the board. This forms your supply, and it is limited to just these tin coins. Pull out the core thief, gear, and location decks. Choose the city in which you'd like to execute your caper, and pull out that deck. Each city has unique thieves, gear, and locations to add into the core decks, as well as unique scoring opportunities. But we'll get into all those nitty-gritty city details a bit later in your training. Shuffle the city's three thieves in with the core thief deck, then set it on the board here. Shuffle the city's six gear cards in with the core gear deck, and place it on the board here. Shuffle the city's five locations in with the core location deck, then reveal three cards, placing one into each location slot on the board. The rest of the locations can be set aside. You won't need them for this caper. Each location now needs items for you to steal. Put all the stolen goods face down on the table and give them a good mix. Then randomly place four at each of the three locations, putting them face up in these slots. This is your caper tracker and is used to show which mastermind is in control of each location. Place one in the middle position of the caper track at each location. Finally, place the round tracker here in the intro slot of the round track, which is between the thief and gear decks. With all that done, you're ready to hire some thieves and attempt your heist. But first, this portion of the film will self-destruct. I'm still here. The film's supposed to ignite. Your heist will I guess it just keeps going. Six rounds, alternating between rounds where you assign thieves to locations and rounds where you equip your thieves with gear. The first thing you'll do each round is check the round tracker. The icon next to the round tracker will tell you if you're dealing cards this round from the thief deck or the gear deck. The number of pips showing is the number of cards dealt to each mastermind for that round and the arrow will be pointing at the mastermind who will take the first turn that round. During each round of the game, you'll be drafting cards. This works like so. During a thief round, the starting mastermind chooses one thief from their hand and plays it to a location on their side of the board. Then the other mastermind takes a turn choosing a thief from their hand and playing it to a location on their side of the board. Then you both swap hands. You then continue to take turns in this manner, the starting mastermind choosing one thief to play to a location, then the rival mastermind choosing one thief to play to a location, then both of you swapping hands again. This continues until you have only one card left in your hand. Instead of swapping these cards, you'll simply discard them face up to your hideout area. Remember, you're giving your rival access to all the cards you choose not to play on a turn. So make your choices wisely. Other things to keep in mind. Each location can only hold a total of three thieves. It doesn't matter which slots in each location you choose to play them to, but once they're filled, no more thieves can be sent there. 
You're trying to be as incognito as possible, after all. Yeah, no one can tell we're the same person. When you play a thief, first check to see if they earn you any coins. The number you gain will be listed here. Then resolve any icons that are triggered. We'll go over these icons in detail momentarily. The gear rounds are very similar to the thief rounds. Check the round tracker for the number of cards to deal from the gear deck. Check who the arrow is pointing toward. They are the starting mastermind and will choose one piece of gear to play on one of their thieves. Then the other mastermind does the same. Then you swap hands again, repeating this process until you have only one card left, which you will discard face up to your hideout area. When you play a gear card, you might have to pay a cost, which is shown here. This card costs one coin. This one costs nothing. Then you will assign the gear to a thief, keeping in mind that each thief can only hold three gear cards. It's hard to be incognito if you're encumbered. See? After you've paid the cost of the gear, resolve any icons that are triggered on the gear card, also checking to see if any icons from your thieves or location are triggered. Then your rival mastermind will take their turn. If you can't afford to play a gear card or you just want to keep it out of the sticky fingers of your opponent, you can discard a card rather than playing one and gain one coin. So now that you know how to assemble your crew by assigning thieves to locations, and equipping them with gear, you need to know how that crew works together. Yes, it's time to talk about those icons. But first, this portion of the training film will self-destruct in three, two, one. This is embarrassing. Did someone skip lunch? I hear his stomach rumbling. Oh, it's just me. <laughs> That is embarrassing. Some icons trigger effects that resolve immediately, and some resolve at the end of the game. When you play a card to a location with this icon, you move the caper tracker at that location one space toward you. If the caper tracker is already on the space closest to you, there's nowhere for it to go, so you don't move it. This icon allows you to gain a coin from the supply. Remember, they are limited to 10 in the entire game. If you should gain coins and there are none left in the supply, you instead gain them from your rival, but only if you have less coins than they do. And you stop gaining coins once you have an equal amount as your rival. Let's say your rival has seven coins and you have three and you've played this plasma cutter, which should earn you four coins. The supply is empty. And since you have less coins than your rival, you will begin taking coins from them one at a time. You stop after you've taken two coins because you now both have five total, which is an equal amount. This icon means you burn a card. Choose one of the topmost gear cards your rival has on their side of the location where you played this. Discard that card and revert any of its effects. For example, if you burn this card, your rival would have to return to the supply the coin they gained from it. Remember that you can only burn the topmost card, so any gear with a card played on top of it is protected. This icon offers burn protection. For example, this icon on the madame means that blue cards cannot be burned at her location. These icons mean you get to take a matching stolen good and put it in your hideout. Make sure you take a good that matches the symbol on the icon from the location where you played the gear card. The question mark allows you to take any stolen good from that location. These icons resolve at the end of the game and earn you points. You will gain a point for each star or number of stars shown. Some icons are paired with other icons or with card colors, and those trigger set effects. Set effects show a card or set of cards pictured above an effect. For example, if you played false documents here, you would of course pay the two coin cost, then resolve the immediate effect of moving the caper tracker. At the end of the game, you would resolve its set effect, which says that for each cream color card at this location, which are thief cards, you will earn one point. 
The conductor card has a set effect that says for each green card played to this location, you may immediately move the caper tracker one space toward you. The dame set effect will earn you points for pairs of cards at her location. This symbol means a gear card of any color, so for each pair of purple and any other color gear card at this location, including another purple card, you will earn two points at the end of the game. Remember that all the cards at each location are part of a crew and they all work together at that location. Gear cards do not need to be played on a specific thief to trigger that thief's icons, as long as they are at the same location as the gear. Playing a red card on the banker here triggers this effect on the illusionist, allowing you to move the caper tracker one space toward you. Location cards also have icons that trigger effects. Some may have ongoing location effects shown with the darker background. This effect is triggered by a mastermind whenever you meet its condition. For example, the caper tracker moves whenever a blue card is played at the Moulin Rouge. These icons depict the number of points a mastermind will score if they win this location. The mastermind who wins the art gallery will score 5 points as well as 1 additional point for each green card they have played to this location. The city you choose to play with will have a unique color and icons. Paris' city color is blue, and locations here reward extra points for stolen goods. The city is home to some of the most valuable diamonds, antiques, and paintings in the world, after all. Gear in Paris focuses on points combos. For example, this icon means that each stolen good in your hideout at the end of the game will score you a point. Barcelona, where the city color is orange, is full of beauty as far as the eye can see. This icon grants a bonus at the end of the game if one of the topmost gear cards in your crew matches the eye's color. For example, this means that if you have a green card as one of the topmost cards at the same location as the Surrealist, you will earn a bonus point for each stolen good in your hideout. The arrows on this icon means its effects are triggered by your crew and your rival's crew. So the Anarchist will grant you a point at the end of the game for each purple card at this location in your crew and in your rival's crew if one of your topmost cards in the crew is purple. In Rome, the city color is pink and emperors and old families are vying for control of the city. Winning locations here will earn you more points so you'll want to make use of the city cards that move the caper trackers. This X icon refers to cards you've discarded to your hideout. So these icons on the driver mean you will move the caper tracker for each purple card and for each yellow card in your hideout. This icon means you will earn a point at the end of the game for each gear card discarded to your hideout. This arrow refers to your rival's crew so if you win the Pantheon, you will earn one point for each yellow card your rival has played to this location. And this icon means you will score two points if you win the location where this card is played. London's city color is dark green, and here it's all about economic development. You'll be gaining coins and hiding them away, affecting the supply. Coins in your hideout can't be used to purchase gear, and your rival can't access them. This icon means to place a coin from the supply into your hideout. If a gear card with this icon is burned, the coin gained from it is removed from the hideout and put back into the supply. This one means that you'll score a point for each coin in your hideout at the end of the game. When this icon triggers, you'll move the caper tracker one space toward you for each coin in your hideout. This icon means that you'll gain a coin for each card of this type in your crew. So the royal will gain you a coin for each thief played to her location. All this talk of points means you're at the end of your heist. And it's time to figure out who is the best mastermind, you or your rival? What have you done? This isn't even a moment where I'm supposed to self-destruct. Just talk about scoring. Once each mastermind has discarded their final card from the sixth round, the heist is over. Pull out your score pad. 
First, take a look at the locations. Identify which mastermind has one each. This is determined by where the caper tracker is on the caper track. The mastermind who has moved it closer to their side has won the location. They now score the points listed at the location, as well as any bonus points from the caper track. If the caper tracker is in a space on the track with stars, the mastermind scores points for each star shown next to the space. If the caper tracker is in the middle, neither mastermind has won this location, and no points or bonuses are awarded. Next, count up all the points scored by thief cards in each of your crews. Then, count all the points earned by all of your gear cards in each crew. Lastly, take a look at the stolen goods in your hideout and sort them into sets with unique icons. Any duplicate goods you have must go into different sets. A set with one good is worth two points. A set with two goods is worth five points. And a set with all three goods is worth nine points. Add your total, and whoever has the highest score wins earning the title of the Master Mastermind. Well, there you have it. Now, since none of this presentation has self-destructed, it looks like I'm <clears throat> gonna have to burn it. Wait, what? Good luck out there. No, uh, no, let's not be too hasty. Welcome to the Society of Scoundrels. Just calm down. Have a great caper. Let's talk about this. Ooh, hot. <laughs>